If you follow uh, theory-oriented, practice-oriented academic articles, or if you read consulting reports, business-related news, even popular press, uh, it's very difficult to escape from these writings about digital transformation, right? Uh, as most of my empirical research work uh, focuses on some form of uh, digital transformation, I chose this topic as, as this, uh, the topic for my uh, installation talk. Uh, in this short presentation, uh, I will do my best to explain uh, how we see digital transformation, trying to unpack what digital transformation means to organizations, uh, and then finally, trying to come up with an answer to this question. So what's so special about digital transformation? Uh, why are we all talking about uh, digital transformation uh, at this uh, time? Uh, I have taken up the habit of whenever I keep a, a lecture or a uh, presentation of looking at uh, the words that appeared in the title of the, uh, of the talk or the course. So here we have uh, a digital transformation. So what, where do these uh, terms uh, come from? Uh, both of them are actually quite old words, of course even though we use them to depict something that is quite modern, quite contemporary, that happens today. Uh, so digital uh, is originally uh, uh, from Latin, or uh, digitalis, uh, per pertaining to fingers or toes. So something that you can count with uh, fingers, uh, so uh, numerals under uh, 10. Of course, uh, more recently, uh, we've used it as an uh, opposition to uh, analog. Then transformation as well, that's an old uh, word. Uh, from uh, old French, uh, uh, meaning basically change of shape. So taken together, this digital transformation refers to something as a change from analog to digital. Of course, this digital transformation, so change of shape from analog to digital, happens on many levels. So uh, we see this kind of uh, societal change towards uh, digital uh, uh, activities, so this continuously evolving uh, societal technological change towards information economy. One example might be the electronic citizenship in Estonia. So to take to today you can get this uh, citizenship in, uh, in a digital form. Uh, another example might be uh, digital tax declarations. So we've moved from analog uh, tax declarations to digital tax declarations in Finland uh, many years ago. Then on organizational level, we see organizations adopting uh, different forms of uh, digital resources in their uh, work processes. Uh, uh, examples, uh, actually in the previous talk, we talked about machine learning. So we have machine learning based algorithms uh, that are penetrating organizational work processes. We have robotic process automation. So we have software robots taking over some facets of our uh, information intensive uh, work processes. Then on the individual level, uh, we have this development towards digital self. Uh, uh, even human thoughts and sensory systems transformed into digital format. Uh, in a milder sense, we have wearables that record a lot of data from our uh, bodily uh, actions and, and um, uh, record those into systems. And finally, we have an artifact level digital uh, transformation in which we're seeing uh, analog artifacts becoming digital ones, right? So for example, a travel ticket. Uh, in the past, the official travel ticket used to be uh, an analog version of that uh, travel ticket. Today, the official travel ticket, it's actually the digital uh, version of the ticket and the uh, physical representation of the ticket is simply a uh, physical representation of the uh, digital uh, official uh, ticket. Uh, digital transformation is a concept that is notoriously difficult to define. Uh, uh, you can approach it from many perspectives. You can approach it from the value proposition perspective. So uh, by engaging in uh, uh, digital transformation, an organization changes its value proposition to the market. You can uh, approach it from a customer perspective. So the interactions with the customers. Uh, be, are becoming uh, uh, more digital. Uh, 
you can dis uh, uh, approach it from this kind of dis uh, disruptive change uh, perspective. So digital transformation entailing these kind of disruptive changes in uh, in the market uh, in the organizations uh, work processes. Uh, in our research, we tend to use the kind of resourcing perspective, meaning that uh, we define digital transformation uh, as a transformation where uh, organizations have in their disposal new forms of digital resources, most notably digital data and digital uh, algorithms. So we all know that there's this uh, data revolution, so the amount of data is growing exponentially in the world, and organizations are harnessing that data revolution to make better decisions based on data. Then there are algorithms, so many organizations are uh, developing uh, algorithms to support their work processes, machine learning based algorithms, but also rules based systems such as robotic process automation that then uh, help uh, employees in their uh, work processes. Um, so how is digital transformation then different from some other form of organizational change? So uh, how is this use of data and algorithm somehow different? Uh, or is it different? Uh, compared to strategy change or business process transformation or some other form of IT-induced uh, uh, change? Uh, our answer to this question would be uh, yes, and, uh, yes and no. It's similar. So if you think about traditional organizational change principles, uh, if we think about top management support, if we think about commitment of employees on all levels of the organization, uh, having a clear business case for the transformation, uh, paying attention to communication, internal and external communication, all of those things are relevant in digital transformation as well. But maybe digital transformation also has some peculiarities. Uh, so next, uh, I will try to outline four of these peculiarities that we've uh, studied in our uh, empirical uh, research. Of course, the first uh, unique characteristic of digital transformation, and this is kind of a circular uh, claim because I'm defining digital transformation as a, uh, as a data resourcing, so, but uh, it's the volume of data. So we're seeing unprecedented amounts of data being uh, analyzed by organizations uh, in order to achieve the benefits of this uh, digital uh, transformation. So organizations uh, need to have uh, processes in place, data architectures in place, uh, uh, to be able to cope with these huge amounts of data uh, uh, that are available to them. So for this, we, we worked with uh, F-Secure, uh, studying their security software. Uh, and that's a good example of an organization uh, that has to deal with a lot of data. So today malware, uh, malware, sam uh, malware is ex expanding in, in such a way that uh, F-Secure actually has to handle uh, more than one, one million uh, malware samples each day. To be able to uh, uh, analyze those malware samples, uh, they've created this kind of rules-based system which helps them to uh, cope with these huge uh, volumes of data. So in this paper we study this kind of uh, very uh, uh, mindful uh, coordination of work between humans and machines so that they can uh, handle that, uh, those uh, data volumes. The next one is, uh, so the, the next unique uh, property of digital transformation is associated with this accuracy and explainability trade-off. Uh, so, of course, organizations uh, want to use the most modern, accurate, machine learning-based uh, systems uh, in their work processes. But many of these systems uh, are intractable, inscrutable in the sense that it's very difficult to explain how the system works, how the system generates the outputs from the input that it uh, receives. Uh, and this is quite unique to the expert systems of the 1980s or 1990s. Uh, uh, so today uh, we're increasingly seeing organizations that uh, struggle with explainability of their systems. 
for this, uh, we worked with the Danish Business Authority, uh, studying their uh, machine learning practices. Uh, and this was a very interesting case because it's a public organization that needs to be able to clearly articulate how the decisions at Danish Business Authority are done. Uh, so they cannot have these kinds of uh, uh, dark corners in their decision making, but they need to be transparent. Nevertheless, they were able to actually uh, implement these uh, highly uh, intractable machine learning based algorithms in their uh, work processes. And in this paper we study how they actually managed to do that. Uh, and the response for that was that they clearly delineated boundaries uh, and areas in which this machine learning uh, could operate uh, so that it could be controlled in a, in a better way. The third unique aspect of digital transformation is associated with biases. Uh, so when organizations engage in the development of these machine learning based algorithms, for instance, uh, we must understand that, of course, these uh, algorithms are not uh, perfect and there are many biases associated with these uh, systems. Here we, we worked with uh, Fujitsu, uh, who is developing a machine learning system uh, to be able to improve the judging of gymnastics. So, of course, gymnasts are doing their movements and routines faster and faster, so it's becoming more, more and more difficult for the human judges uh, to actually evaluate the performance of a gymnast. Uh, so here Fujitsu has a system that allows you to study, uh, allows you to uh, make an, an uh, evaluation of the gymnast's performance uh, in a uh, non-biased way uh, compared to humans. But in our uh, study, we actually uh, understood in interestingly that human-based judging has certain biases, but uh, machine learning-based judging has its own uh, biases. The final uh, unique aspect of digital transformation that we consider important is associated with erosion of skills. So uh, many of these algorithms that organizations are deploying uh, take over cognitive tasks in organizations. Uh, and uh, that has uh, the potential to lead to detrimental effects uh, in terms of the skill sets of the employees. Uh, here we worked with uh, an anonymous uh, accounting company uh, in terms of their fixed assets management uh, practices and found that the organization had deployed an automation system to handle their fixed assets. Uh, the system was discontinued, interestingly, after seven, seven years of operation, uh, which revealed that the accountants had been de-skilled. They, no they, they no longer knew how to do the underlying work process, uh, fixed assets management, which is an important uh, process for these organizations because it has huge strategic uh, uh, implications for uh, for their client companies. So interestingly, uh, the use and over-reliance of accountants on this uh, system uh, led to a situation that you had an accounting company in which you had accountants responsible for their clients' bookkeeping, no longer having the necessary skills to actually uh, conduct the uh, underlying uh, work task. So kind of an alarming example of uh, digital transformation. So to conclude, uh, uh, we claim that uh, compared to some other forms of organizational transformation, uh, digital transformation uh, in organizations is same but different. So all the usual uh, organizational change uh, practices and, and guidelines apply, but there are certain uh, key uh, points that organizations need to uh, uh, take into account. And these were associated with these data volumes, explainability, biases, and uh, de-skilling. Uh, there's a paper behind each of these, so nothing would, be, not, nothing would make me happier than uh, seeing some of you actually going and, and reading these papers. Maybe the easiest way to access those is through my uh, Google Scholar profile. So I uh, hope you have a better understanding now. Uh, on how we see 
uh, organizational uh, digital transformation and what are the uh, interesting points associated with that phenomenon. Thanks for listening. <laughs>